Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. You're probably all curious about what, what is this all about? What is this brand? What is Baong? All right, let me tell you. So first of all, Baong, right? The word Baong, in that word is Ong, as you can see, O-N-G. And Ong is a reference to, you know, your grandparents, right? Um, this is where we really started, but, but the word Baong, what it means, all together is, you know, like Zeus, the man upstairs in the heavenlies. And this, this, is a, this is actually a connection to this overall design. And I'm gonna tell you about that here in just a second. So, you know, what is, what is, what is Ba'ong? What is the reference to it? How does it connect to this top part up here? Let me talk about that then. So here, right here, as you can see, right, the hair is up here. This is the, one of the most interesting things. And this is based on actual historical document that was created. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's about a scholar. Chinese man that goes into China and he goes to go find um, the, the Mian homeland, right? And, and what led him on that journey was actually started with uh, a piece that he found. So he studies local uh, ethnic minorities in uh, southern China and he found a piece of an ox horn. So out of, an, uh, out of a horn, he found a piece of, an, a piece of that. And it, it was interesting because it had, uh, it had written a uh, last name on it. It had a Chinese character and that Chinese character represented a last name. Right? And, that, and that character last name, right, it led to um, a conversation with a tribal elder. And the tribal elder revealed that there was actually a history about Mian people that talked about this hidden homeland. Right? And this hidden homeland was somewhere in China, southern China. But because we had migrated after so, after so many hundreds of years, we kind of lost that. And only by, um, through verbal storytelling, were we able to pass on that knowledge. Right? Now, there was a bit of a written history on that, but um, this, this, this set this, the scholar, this Chinese scholar, on a journey. And he went on this journey to go try to find out more about this place. Does it even exist? Is it real? Right? And he started going around to all the local Mian villages in uh, southern China, and he started finding out that the, the, the stories that the elders were talking about were very, very similar. It talked about a beautiful place that opened up, but you had to find it in the mountains. So there's a mountain place. And that's what this top part of this figurine here represents. So if you see the hills up here, these are actually the mountains of that. Now in that story, it talks about how there's a, a cave just big enough for an ox horn, I mean an ox, right? for an ox to get through that passage. And once you get through that passage of the cave, on the other side, it opens out to a valley. And that's what these eyebrows up here represent. These eyebrows here are actually the rivers that intersect. So after you get through that passageway, you're gonna see this valley open up. You see all these rivers, right? And that's what this middle part of the circle here represents, the homeland of Mian people, which they refer to as Qin Jia Dong. And up here you see this diamond, this, uh, well, it's like a triangle shape right here. This is actually the cave, the passage for you to go through. Now, in today's uh, modern history, they actually have found this place, and they actually throw the King Pond Festival there. So if you hear of, ever like a reference about King Pond, right, and King Pond Festivals, there's a King Pond Festival in Oakland, California, but there's also a massive one Right, like the, the biggest, uh, as you can think of, like say, um, think of how like Christians go back to like, they go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Think of that as our route of passage to go back to our homeland. And it's in Southern China. So they, they do it every year. I believe it's around like uh, January, February every year where they always host this massive King Pond Festival. And it brings in a lot of international people. And if you're a Mian person here in America, you would go back there and you speak to them in Mian language. There's not much dialect. The language is almost the exact same. Right? And it's just crazy that how after all these hundreds of years that we're still interconnected. And that's what has led to creating this, this design of Ba'om and what it, what it all represents. Now this bottom part, which you're probably curious about, is why this face? Right? Why this face? Right? This face is actually um, historical proof. So in that homeland of Chin Chia Dong, in that valley, in the, there, there was a site there. So it was like a kind of like, a, it's not a burial site, but they had a place that, uh, that they had discovered. And as they were, they were, they were doing like archeology, span surveying the land and stuff like that. They found a piece of, of relics. They found these uh, urns, right? And inside these urn, it turned out that there was a figurine. And on that figurine on the side, it was actually this face right here. So this face, it's like an omnipresence face, right? They're like, why that face? Well. That has to do with possibly what we refer to as like, you know, uh, what the Chinese people refer to Mian people as Yao. And that word is actually derogatory, it means dog. 
right? Yao people or dog people. But in ancient times, Yao might have been referenced to indigenous people, indigenous mountain people. And that's the reference up to Mian people because we lived in the mountains. Now that urn that they found in the burial site, which had this face, they took that urn to a university lab and they had it carbon dated. Right? What they do is they find out how old is this? It's kind of like how when you look at trees, you cut a tree in half and you look at the rings, right? They look at how, how old it is. Well, that's what they did with this urn and they found out that it was dated back between 1200 to 1300 years old. That is crazy, right? The Mian culture has probably persisted even longer than that, maybe up to 2,000 years old. But from that proof that they found in this holy land of ours, it's 1,200, 1,300 years old, right? And that reference here, it had this face on it, right? Which probably is, makes a lot of sense why Mian people in our traditional clothing, right? In weddings, you see the guys, right? They have that, 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 that crossing, right? That's a reference to cover the hair. And in the ancient times, they talked about, in like elder stories, they talked about covering the head, right? And in the old mythological story that ties back to this design is about a dog, a dog that becomes a human and he covers his head because of his, his dog. Right? So, I mean, this all is Ba'ong, a reference to creating this design of a mythological person, the ancient history of Yumian history. And the outer borders right here, as you see, this is actually tiger claw. So there's like claw going up, claw going down. It keeps repeating over and over and over. And if you ever see this, this pattern, it's actually quite common. So in, um, in where moms um, carry babies in the back, that swang bui, that's actually, there's the pattern of the tiger claws repeated all over. And that represents protection. And as you see here with this all coming full circle, we want to create, we, we want to protect Mian culture. And that's what this border represents. Protecting Mian culture, creating awareness. And that's what Ba'ong, and that's how we came up with Ba'ong, what we stand for today. And that's just only the beginning. Thank you for tuning in.